We had an amazing week last weekend uh, in terms of Colorado football. That's right, we did spot time, we had a win. Bump set and spike it, we also had some volleyball. So make sure that you stay tuned because we have all this and more coming up on CU Sports Night. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of CU Sports Mag. I'm Heather Morba, sitting alongside Kylie Burse. That's right, Heather. We have a great show in store for you, so let's jump right into those awesome football highlights from last week. So, Ralphie was looking fierce on game day. That's right, he was. These fans, not so much. More noodle-like, if you ask me. So, Cody's going to start off the game. He completes this pass to number 87, Ryer Gear. That's right. Baby Hawk once again hands it off to Demetrius Sumler, who hits the ground, loses the ball, but Scotty McKnight swoops in, grabs the ball, and dives into the end zone. Touchdown, Buffaloes. Scotty was there to save the day. And you know what that means? Chip's going to have a serious upper body workout. That's right. Luckily, he's been training, though. <laughs> so, uh, Cowboys quarterback Robert Benjamin will get sacked by defensive tackle Will Paracac. Now, I'm not sure, Heather, but this definitely looks like history repeating itself. Quarterback down again. That was the third down for the Cowboys. Now they're going to have to kick. That's right, Kylie. But CU totally saw this fake punt coming. And CU um, is going to push him right out of bounds, get the ball, and they're also going to get some pretty prime field position. That's right. Buffs have the ball once again. All right, now watch Hawkins carefully as he scrambles around the backfield, finally finding Scotty McKnight, and hits him right in the money. Buffs on the 20. And so the Cowboys are going to get the ball back on this next play. They're you know, trying to make those plays, but CU's defense is just too much to handle. So much so that the Buffs recover this fumble. Buffalo football. That's right. Uh, Buffs have the ball once again, right on the brink of the end zone. Speedy Stewart goes in for the kill and gives the Buffs yet another touchdown. The crowd is fired up. The players are fired up. And you know what? They're doing a little bit of team bonding there, too. Uh, you can totally see the momentum change right here. Um, Wyoming, they're getting sloppy, throwing the ball away to nowhere. That's right, so halftime, 17-0 at the half. So the Cowboys are going, again, a little wild in the backfield, but a Buffalo tackle results in negative yards. All right, so here's a handoff to Speedy, and this time he's darting down the field and is tackled just shy of the end zone. That gives us the opportunity to make this play. Impressive run into the end zone. That puts the Buffs at 24, taking the game in a shutout against Wyoming. That's right, so let's take a look at these stats. Rodney Stewart, 132 yards, and Cody Hawkins, 175 yards. So definitely great game for the Buffs. I'm glad we finally got this going. Let's hear what Coach had to say after the game. Hey, I mean, the great thing is we talked about this before, is having some talent and having some depth. And Daryl was dinged from last week. He had a great game, and he couldn't do a whole lot today. And Speedy came in and, uh, and played well. And I still think Demetrius is pretty good, and, and so is Belock. So those guys are pretty talented. And again, the nice thing is to be in a game where you can have some rhythm and mix some things up and don't have to just uh, you know, forget that and, and, and huck it every down. So once you get in a, in a rhythm and you get a little confidence and you get, you, you're within your game, then you can mix it up a little bit with those guys. Even when we can't always count on a win from our Buffs, we can rest assured that Scotty McKnight will at some point cradle the ball and get the crowd on their feet. For 27 games in a row, McKnight has made a reception, tying him for first place for the school record of consecutive game catches. Now that he's made 109 catches total, he's eighth for all time for receptions in CU history. The season's only just begun, and hopefully McKnight will continue to make his mark on the field and in the record books. After an extended absence, three players have returned to the CU football scene. Nick Casa, Max Tuioti Mariner, and Bryce Givens came back for a variety of different reasons. Givens missed the CU Wyoming game and a week of practice due to personal reasons. Casa has had to pass up practice since August 21st after injuring his knee, and Tuioti tore his ACL during the offseason drills in March. Even with these drawbacks, the players have managed to push forward and return to their original positions on the team. Going once, going twice, go get your throwback football jersey. The 1937 edition Colorado Buffaloes jerseys are being auctioned off to the public. They are updated Nike versions of what the legendary 1937 team wore over 70 years ago. 
The reason for the jerseys is to commemorate the season in which the Buffs went 8-0 with Byron Wizard White, who led the nation in rushing yards and later became a Supreme Court Justice. The, jer the jerseys are priced at $600 and can be found on cubuffs.com. Here at CU Sports Mag, we are passionate about sports, so that's why our Big 12 Minute is actually about two. So make yourself comfortable because here we go. So, Kansas Jayhawks kicked it off against Duke last weekend. Um, and there's the snap. Todd's Reesing passes it into a touchdown to Desmond Briscoe. Um, Duke gets the ball back. Thaddeus Lewis is going to look to go deep. So this defensive end, he picks it right off like a ripe banana. And he's going to run it all the way down the field into the end zone. Rock Chalk Jayhawk touchdown. Uh, this game finished up with a KU victory, 44-16 over Duke. All right, we have Mizzoui versus Furman as well. Quarterback Blaine Gabbert does a pitch pass to wide receiver Denario Alexander, who launches the ball 50 yards to Jared Perry. These Tigers are on the prowl. Furman quarterback Jordan Sorrells tries to be the knight in shining armor, but the Tigers claw their way to another touchdown as Jackie Smith runs into the end zone. These Tigers may not be messing around, but they sure do get a little playful every once in a while. Once again, Mizzou quarterback Blaine Gabbert starts us off and sends the ball directly into the arms of Denario Roberts, who, in true Tiger fashion, pounces into the end zone. Final score for that game, 52-12. Next up, we have Texas Tech versus the Longhorns, and kicker Donnie Corona blasts it out of the end zone right into the arms of superstar Jordan Shipley. And honestly, I think he really runs that fast. So he takes it all the way in for an impressive touchdown. Tech's Taylor Potts, um, he's going to get the snap. He thinks he has time, but is taken down in true Longhorn fashion by Sergio Kindle. Ouch, his helmet was off. But he'll be back to lay it off for a final touchdown to Tremaine Swindle. But it wasn't enough for Tech. Longhorns winning 34-24. to All right, Iowa State versus Kent State. Quarterback Austin Arnett sends the ball straight up into the air, just like a cyclone, all the way down the field to Jake Williams, who crashes into the end zone. A booming punt right here by Mike Brandert sends the ball soaring down the field. But is anyone looking? No. Finally, they nail the ball and get that ball into their possession. Uh, Arnott, Arnott has the ball once again. This time he fakes to Jeremiah Schwartz, who heads downfield. But when he gets down there, he barely makes it into the end zone. But it's good. Cyclones again. This time Arnott decides to switch it up and run the ball in for the touchdown. 34-13 Iowa State for that game. Despite being a mere 5 foot 6 inches, sophomore Rodney Stewart packed a mean punch and managed to give the Buffs 127 yards and two touchdowns on 32 carries in last week's game against Wyoming. An effort good enough to earn him Athlete of the Week on. We got a big spark. You know, we got our confidence back. You know, we lost to some teams I don't think we really were supposed to lose to. I didn't know I had that many carries, to be honest, against Wyoming. So for me to be so little and carry the ball so many times, that it told me something. Offensive line affects my performance a lot because if they don't block, I can't get through the hole, I can't do nothing. And they did an amazing job. That's why we was able to move the ball down the field effectively. I'm Rodney Story, CU Sports Mac, Athlete of the Week. So coming up, we'll have an inside look into one of our very own Colorado football players' lives. That's right. And then we also have a sneak peek at what's coming up later. Some volleyball, bump set, and spike it. Make sure you stay tuned. Help wanted. Immediate openings available for the most important jobs in America. Helping the organizations that help children. Whatever you can do, in whatever time you have, you can make a difference. To learn how you can help in your community, reach us at this web address and number. We're fighting for the children. Whose side are you on? Change. It's coming faster. Only those with high-tech skills will excel. I'm getting those skills now in the Air Force. It's given me powerful tools, education, training, and experience. With Air Force skills, I can keep up with tomorrow's changes, and so can you. Are you running on empty after countless late nights studying? Relying on caffeine to keep you awake throughout the day? According to researchers at Brown University, a shocking 89% of college students nationwide struggled to get the necessary eight hours of sleep recommended each night. 
Getting a full night's rest promotes a healthy immune system, supports memory function, and restores energy. Sleep is not a waste of time, and sleep deprivation can have serious negative effects on your academic performance and social life. Eight hours. Get some. Dude. It wastes energy to leave everything on. It's simple. Just turn it off before you go to sleep. Do your part! Be energy smart! After beating then number two Nebraska in four sets last season in Boulder, the CU Volleyball team was looking to repeat this season as the Cornhuskers came into town last Saturday. After dropping the first set in front of over 2,000 fans who were wearing mostly red at the Coors Event Center, the Buffs came back and took a 13-5 lead midway through the second set. However, the undefeated Cornhuskers showed why they're one of the top teams in the nation as they came back to win the second set. Nebraska would end up taking the third set as well to give the Buffs their sixth loss of the season. Three days later, the women's volleyball team tried for redemption against number two Texas Longhorns. The Buffs held their own in the first set with key plays by Becca Fogel and Rosie Steinhaus. The Longhorns lineup proved too strong for the Buffs and gained, and gained precious ground in the second and third sets. It seemed like Ralphie knew what they were getting into. So there you have it. So here we go again with the volleyball. Um, they are playing the Longhorns in this one. It was a pretty exciting game, however, the Buffs just couldn't hold on. They fought it out um, over the course of the three sets, but unfortunately would lose it in the end. So, um, the Buffs are looking to redeem themselves this coming weekend in their match against Oklahoma in the set at 7 p.m. at the Coors Event Center. Chip is going wild in that. For the second year in a row, the CU Student Athletes Advisory Committee is teaming up with Coats for Colorado to donate gently used coats for families in need. You can help out by donating your gently used coats at the Saturday volleyball game and Sunday soccer game. The last chance to participate in the coat drive will be the family weekend football game against the Jayhawks on October 17th. Drop-off points for the coats include Franklin Field, Dwayne Physics, and the Math Building. Help out those in need by donating to this worthy cause. The Buffs teed it up this past weekend in New Mexico. Colorado was led by sophomore Emily Talley, who finished 22nd overall. The teams finished 10th against some elite competition. The number 14 team in the nation, Pepperdine, won the tournament, along with the host, New Mexico, coming in a close second. Watch for the Buffs, who play at their home course, Colorado National, on October 5th and 6th in the Heather Farr Memorial. The CU tennis team will get their season underway this weekend as they will host the CU Invitational here in Boulder. The Buffs will compete with the likes of Air Force, Colorado State, Arkansas, and Louisiana Lafayette. Nine players will be in action this weekend, including three seniors, a first in Coach Nicole Keneally's tenure. Play starts on Friday and will continue through the rest of the weekend with two singles draws and one doubles draw on the slate. Ever wonder how CU athletes fare outside of the NCAA? Some are luckier than others, which brings us to our weekly Sports Mag Trivia question. What Colorado football alum broke his leg on the very first play in, the N in his NFL debut? Thinking over and we'll be back with the answer shortly. That's right, and coming up we'll have some um, action, you know, some football action in double teams. So we're pretty excited about that. So stay tuned. And here's a quick look at a very special story that we have coming up after the break, so make sure that you don't touch that dial. Ah, uh, it's a great day, isn't it? Yeah. Too bad your boat's gonna sink at 11.05. Don't come closer. I have rabies. Don't you wish there were warnings to protect you from life's risks? With diabetes, there is one. It's called A1C, a simple blood test that helps measure your risk of serious complications. We're, no, we're tossing two shots. Learn more at diabetesa1c.org. Um, I'll just say welcome back. Hey, I'll just How's say welcome going? back and then you toss the double team. Okay, so Sir, are you okay? What? That's how it is? It's probably nothing. I'm sure it'll go away. Go away? But, sir, that can't be good. No, it's cool, really. 
Do you want a napkin or something? Everything's fine. Thanks. You wouldn't ignore this. So why ignore the signs of a stroke? At the first warning signs, call 911 immediately. Because time lost is brain lost. Welcome back to CU Sports Mag. That's right. And we're actually going to talk some football. Luke and Kai have a lot of questions and answers for us over on the double team set. Take it away, guys. And Luke, let's get right off to it. Past three games, they're done with. They're in the books. Let's see how CU's football team's doing so far this year. How are they looking, Luke? Well, so far this year, we've really seen two completely different football teams. We've seen the team that showed up against Wyoming played lights out. They Absolutely. had 31 throws for Hawkins against 45 rushes. That's a very balanced team. Good balance. They got the shutout. Great game. Different story in the first two weeks of the season. We had CSU and Toledo. Hawkins threw 100 passes in those two games against only 44 rushes. You're throwing twice as many passes. That's terrible balance. You can't win games like that Absolutely at this not. level. Absolutely they're outscored 46 to three in the first half. Obviously Hawkins has thrown so many passes because they're getting behind. So what does that tell us about the defense? Defensively, Luke, let me just throw a couple numbers at you. Our defense in the CSU game, I mean, it, it was basically about big plays. I mean, they, they opened the game with the big play. They ended the game with the big play, you know. Five plays of over 20 yards, 215 total yards on those, on those five plays alone. Right, 376 right. yards total offense for the game. Toledo, these, this is just, out, just astonishing. 11 plays of over 20 yards, 431 yards, Luke, out of their total 624 yards. But then you step back and you look at Wyoming, one play of over 20 yards and that nice, nice, nice shutout that they received during that game. And, and when your defense plays like they did against Wyoming, you're not going to have any difficulties at all. Right, right. You got to look at the level of competition, too. I mean, Toledo, that's a very high-octane high high offense. Yeah, absolutely. But you can't surrender 1,000 yards of offense in two no. games. Are no, you kidding no, no. me? Absolutely not. Anyway, switching gears a little bit, now we're going to talk about everybody's favorite position, the quarterback. The quarterback position. Right. It's the glamour, you get the credit, and you also get the blame. So let's talk about Cody Hawkins. He's Boulder's quarterback. How's he doing thus far? You know, this year Cody's started off, for lack of better words, a, a weak season so far. Um, second in the Big 12 for pass attempts, Luke, all right, attempts. Last in passing efficiency. So when, when he is stepping back in that pocket, 30-plus throws a game, you're going to want to complete more than about 50% of your passes, no matter who you are and what league you are. I mean, the Big 12 is known for pro prolific passers, especially at the quarterback position. And so Cody right now, he's trying to find his balance between that, you know, his receivers and the defenses, picking apart those defenses. It, it, is, it has been a rocky start, a rough and rocky start for Cody Hawkins so far thus this season. Right, you mentioned other prolific passers in the Big 12, yes. obviously known as a quarterback's conference, lots of offense. Absolutely. Let's talk about a new guy. His name is Blaine Gabbert. He's a starter at Missouri this year. He's six foot five, 240 pounds. He's a big guy. Let me hold you up real fast. So take a look at this. This kid, 6'5", 240, 4640. He loves high stepping in that end zone with that speed. And it is extremely nice to see a sophomore step into that big a position and, and make such an impact in his, in his starting years. Right, I mean, especially with sophomores, with young guys, you're usually not seeing that great of completion percentage, not that great accuracy, but he's first in pass rating in the Big 12, 11th in the country, third in completion percentage in the Big 12. You better watch out for this guy. Another guy who's been lighting up scoreboards for three years now, he's a senior, is Colt McCoy. Last year he set an NCAA record with 77% completions. That's amazing. He also threw for over 3,800 yards and 34 scores against only eight INTs, 173 passer rating. He's a little cold this year, completing only 68% of his passes. Only 68%, yeah. But Texas is 3-0. Last week they beat a team who's got a quarterback that quarterback that really lights up the scoreboard. Exactly. Let me let me throw some more numbers at you here. 70% completions of over 1,200 yards, 12 touchdowns, 151 passer rating. Wait, how, how many games is this? <laughs> Keep in mind, this is three games into the season. Three games into the season, and he is just a brainchild of Mike Leach down there. A any guesses of who this mystery man is? Uh, I would say Drew Brees, if I had to guess. Ooh, ooh cl close, close. No cigar, though. It's, it's Taylor Potts down in Texas Tech University, and he is really yeah. working that spread offense to a right. point, Luke, to a point. I mean, you look at that spread offense, somebody's always open. Mike, Ch Mike Leach sorry, has got that down pat. 
But you look at Graham Harrell. He was up for a Heisman last year, putting up numbers all over the place. And where is he now? I believe he's in the Canadian Football League, Luke. Um, right? I, I don't think he made the cut in the NFL. And, and that's just a testament to how strong the Big 12 quarterback position is. Um, that's all the time we have for you today. But come back next time and we'll talk a little bit more football. Thanks a lot. The demands of the average college student are anything but easy. Linebacker Marcus Burton is managing to juggle school, Division I football, and a family. News Team's Kelsey Kimball has the story. Nearly every player on the 2007 football team will remember September 29th as the day they beat fourth-ranked OU. But for inside linebacker Marcus Burton, that day is significant for other reasons. That was the day his oldest son Tyson was born. Soon after, Marcus and his wife Krislin were married, and on the 6th of September, they celebrated the birth of their second child, Noah. Everyone's day begins promptly at 6 a.m. In one short hour, Krislin and Marcus dress and feed the kids, walk the dog, and then get themselves ready for the day. Then, Marcus is off to school and practice, and Tyson is off to daycare. Krislin is currently on maternity leave, so she stays home with Noah, but would otherwise head to her job as a full-time teacher. It's been crazy, just crazy life, but I really wouldn't have it any different because we're both doing what we love to do. I mean, gosh, we're just so blessed in so many different areas that it's hard to be like, oh, I can't do this, this sucks. Marcus and Krislin met during their athletic careers at CU. Krislin played volleyball during her time at CU. And now, not just as athletes, but also as parents, they understand that life can be just as unpredictable as the sports they play. Life's gonna have some unexpected things. You know, no one, Things like, oh, I'm going to go to college and have two kids and get married. But, I mean, it's life. And we're enjoying the process. We're enjoying this moment. And she's graduated. She has a degree. i got to get mine now. So, <laughs> But, I mean, it's fun. Between the two of us, we, it works. Both Krislin and Marcus would agree that their lives have taken some surprising turns. But through their love of one another and the support from the people around them, they are able to make it all work and would not have it any other way. Kelsey Kimball, News Team Boulder. Thanks, Kelsey, for that story. The Buffs soccer team crashed and burned last weekend in California. Friday night, number three Stanford fired 24 shots compared with Colorado, which just shot nine. Stanford won the game 4-0. CU offense seemed to improve for Sunday's game against Santa Clara. Freshman Amy Barksook fired a shot from 25 yards out, missing the net by inches. Overtime proved to be too much, though, and Santa Clara defeated Colorado 1-0. On that note, the Colorado soccer team will look to rebound when it opens Big 12 play with two home games this weekend. The first game will take place on Friday when CU hosts Nebraska at Prent Up Field. The Buffs will look to contain a Nebraska offense, which leads the nation in scoring with 36 goals through eight games this season. Sunday's match won't get any easier when the Cyclones of Iowa State come storming into town to wrap up the weekend. ISU has started the season with an impressive 7.1 goals against the average this season. The Buffs will have to bring their A game to walk away with a pair of wins. Speaking of Nebraska, we do like to poke a little bit of fun at our neighbors over in Lincoln. And there's no better time to do so than right before a Huskers team plays a CU team. In honor of the soccer matchup this weekend, here is our Nebraska joke. How did the, have the Cornhuskers count to 10? And the answer, 0-1, 0-2, 0-3, 0 you get the idea. So, <laughs> there you have it, Nebraska joke of the week. Wow. Yeah. So, um, anyway, we, uh, how'd you like that one, Kylie? I really <laughs> enjoyed that joke. Did you make it up yourself there? I didn't. I have to credit Amanda Blackwell on mm, that one. Ooh, good Thanks, one. Amanda. Uh, thank you, Amanda. Uh, coming up, we know you all want to know what the weather is going to be like this weekend. That's right. And also, stay tuned for the answer to the trivia question. On the me just a second. Is, we don't want to be, we why, don't why be why at you your party me? any more than you want us here. What could we have done to avoid this? Keep the noise down so no one complains. Hey! Yes! Keep it down! The neighbors are complaining. Make sure anyone drinking alcohol is at least 21. You sure you're old enough? And finally, make sure that you don't have too many people. Man, that would have been easy. I wish I had known the rules. Now you know. Avoid trouble. Know the rules.
We want to see our children succeed. But setting easy goals for our kids creates the toughest obstacle they'll ever face. Because succeeding in the real world isn't easy. Help the effort to raise standards in America's public schools. Call 1-800-96-PROMISE. All right, you trivia junkies, have you figured out the answer yet? To refresh your memory, the question was, what Colorado football alum broke his leg on the very first play in his NFL debut? The answer is, drumroll please, Matt Russell. He played for the Detroit Lions in 1997 and never played another game after his injury. Well, I guess he was so nervous he really did break a leg. So you students say they're knowledgeable in football, but can they live up to the claim? Sports Mag's Alex Breidenbaugh hit the campus to find out. I'm Alexis Breidenbaugh here at the UMC, and I asked students what they thought about CU football so far this year. First, I wanted to know what players did they think helped the team, and what players do they think needed to step up? I don't think that we really need to point our finger at one person. Um, I think it's a collective effort because obviously you wouldn't be able to win unless you had every aspect. Linebacking core has done a good job. Um, also, Scotty McKnight has done a good job carrying the team. Next, I asked students how they felt the win last weekend against Wyoming will affect our next game against West Virginia. Boulder, we're gonna take it, we're gonna take it to them. We're gonna kick their butts. <laughs> That's just how we fly here at CU. Kinda low, so this should definitely give them a boost, especially energy and motivation to carry on um, and hopefully continue to win. Next, I asked students how they think the 10-day break between games will affect the morale of our team. Well, I mean, just if the coach kind of knows how to keep building them up, you know, I think it could be really a good advantage, like if we if we use it wisely. <laughs> Even though we have a, a break, I think everyone will be really excited and there'll be a high energy in the crowd, so hopefully that'll get the football players pumped as well. Lastly, how did students feel about the home team advantage versus being away? I mean, if we can get back in that just buff spirit, you know, <laughs> we could really, we could take it anywhere. It doesn't matter where we are. We can, we can win. I'm Alexis Breidenbaugh, CU Sports Mag. All right, so we've had a pretty crazy week of weather. That's right, we have. So luckily, we have our very own weatherman, Matt Sewick, here to tell us a little bit about what's going to happen uh, the next week. Thanks guys, it's been a pretty chilly week, but fortunately this weekend is going to be beautiful, very sunny, and I'll talk to you about the local weather in Boulder, as well as some uh, events you can go to enjoy your, to enjoy your sunny week. Really uh, looking at the local, right, so uh, the national back. temperatures, uh, we are moving from the purple and blue, uh, from those low 50s into those green colors uh, in Colorado, it will go into the high 70s. And now looking at the fronts in the nation, we do have a high pressure system in Colorado, which means it will be clear and sunny skies all weekend long. There is a possible chance of some rain and thunderstorms in the eastern Colorado, but that should clear out by tomorrow. In northwest uh, of the nation, uh, we do have a cold front that could come down into Colorado, uh, but that wouldn't be until the start of next week. Looking at the uh, weather locally in Boulder, uh, on Friday it will be partly cloudy, but it will still be beautiful, the high 67, and then the rest of the weekend will be beautiful, high 70s, and only dipping into the 40s at night. Now, uh, we are playing West Virginia next Thursday. It is in Morgantown, West Virginia. Uh, the high for that day is 71, and so when kickoff starts at 5.30, it will be beautiful, around 60 degrees, and uh, definitely have to check that out. Uh, locally, a sport venue, we have the Colorado Rockies are playing the St. Louis Cardinals uh, all weekend long. If you want to go to the night games on Friday and Saturday, definitely go to those. But if you want to see some sun and uh, enjoy the outdoors, then I would say on Sunday, maybe go to 16th Street Mall, enjoy uh, some lunch, and then hit up the 1 o'clock game. I was pretty curious about the records of uh, Boulder, and so... Um, the first snowfall that, that was earliest in the year was September 12th of 1974. Imagine if it's already snowed. Now the record highs for this weekend were all the way back in the 50s when we had the high 80s and low 90s. Um, 90 degree weather does sound pretty great, but our summer moisture and rain uh, will give us a great ski season. I have to say I'm really excited about that, Matt. Can't wait to go skiing. Yeah, it'll be a good weekend. All right, well, that's all the time we have for CU Sports Meg. For Matthew Seawick, Heather Morba, and I'm Kylie Burrs. Have a great weekend, guys.